and I loved it. <laughs> I remember my mom used to have to like sit under a seasonal like depression box when we were growing up because it was cloud. Is it's gray nine to ten months out of the year in Oregon, uh, really? and it like it rains. I guess probably ten months out. Of, 10 months out of the year and then you know it's great but the summers are incredible uh but yeah it was hard she was like what the what the hell am i doing here but me and my dad loved it oh really that's like me i need sunshine my wife is like you she's just like (laughs) give me cold let me i just i can't do with this heat i'm burning (laughs) my skin's going and I'm just like, oh, I love this. That's incredible. <laughs> How long have you been with your wife for? Uh, so we've been together for 15 years. We've been married for 11. Wow. So, yeah. We've got a little boy who's 10. Well, he's a big boy now. Yeah. So we're like, little unit. Oh, my God. This is beautiful. What is your son's name? His name's Jasper. Oh. Yeah. Do you love being... Actually, I, I'm so happy to talk to you. I... Um, what is it like balancing motherhood and uh, doing our doing our lives and our career and making music and all that? It's it's hectic, but I think I I always have specific days and times where it's just like it's Jasper day to day. So I I I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. My diary's clear. It's Jasper day. I think it's so important to have that 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 time to to give him. So he knows the days we're together. He knows the days I pick him up from school. He knows the, and and he so he has a routine as well. I think if you just try and find time for people, it never comes. You have to do the time. You have to. It has to be almost like a part of your di- calendar and your diary. Yeah. And that yeah. sounds crazy. It's making time for your kids in, in your calendar, but that's why you have to do to make sure they know that that's that, their special time with you and you've got that with them. Because totally. it, it's like this. Like, literally, 10 years he's been here. I can remember the day we were born like it was yesterday. And it just flies so fast. So you that have is... to bait the time. Wow. Really and yeah. do you feel like... I mean, you, you tour, and so... How d- so I'm only I tend to stay UK. Okay. Because okay. for that for that main reason. Uh, like, totally. Because I can sort of like I can take my family with me. Um there's no stress in like how far we're gonna be flying, how many hours we're gonna be. So it, and UK is pretty small. Dude, you know, you can you can are travel so lucky. UK. You are so lucky. I mean, even even like Europe, and I mean, it's now it's a little bit more challenging getting in and out of you know of of, the, of London and stuff. But yeah. I can't believe once you're over here how it's just an hour flight anywhere. It feels like yeah, it's, it's mind blowing. Literally, you can just be anywhere you want to be so fast, like yeah. America. Yeah. It's like you are literally flying hours to get to. A, another place in, it's in six the hours it's as long it takes as long to get from new york to la as it does from new york to london yeah it's yeah insane. it's crazy so so would you bring so w- uh, do you bring your family or do you just uh if you are like you know gigging around the uk do you kind of do you just go and then come back or what have you found it, to it, be it depends really it always depends on the place if i think it's going to be a fun place for jasper to be then we kind of all go together if it's just like say like a two day festival and I think it's going to be a bit much for him or whatever, I just yeah. go do my thing, come back home. It's all we, we always base it around him basically, but I love him to see the life of it as well because yeah. he loves music. Is is he he just loves music? So it's like it's really nice for him to see things happening. It's really good. Like literally, my laptop is sat on his bongos now. <laughs> He's got proper bongos. He's like <laughs> indoctrinated him young. That is so cool. He uh, loves it. He's it got sounds, like everything. That's so cool. And it sounds like you have a supportive partner to, you know, come she with you and maybe amazing. take care of the kid. Yeah. She's amazing. Like, I am sat here now with you because of her. She's just literally pushed me to do this. She's been like, Shy, there's something there. You could do music. Just do it. Go. And I'm no like, oh. way. 
Yeah, and she's just she's she gets in touch with people for me. She gets my music out there. She's just like she's like my biggest fan. <laughs> she's just amazing, dude. That we, is oh my gosh, those people in our life. It's a, a, a little angel, you know. She's actually your guardian literally. angel. Um, you know, beyond being yeah. a badass human in in their own right, uh, and your partner. But like that is that is the guardian angel. You know, yeah, that's a my. Literally. I'm also sitting here right in front of you because of. I have a partner who who has uh, pushed me and supported me to be here, and I, that would not it's have amazing. happened otherwise. You know, it's because amazing. it's like it's so when it, when I first started, at least for me, I was like, why do I think I can be, you know, a one a gazillion artist who can make a living this way? Like, you know, why do I think? Yeah. And uh, I think that without his like, you know, his unwavering belief, I just I don't know if I could have found that internally at first. Yeah, and that is exactly what it is. And because I think you deeply trust that person, I, I deeply trust Mel. So I, I will go with what she, she like tells me to do. Not tells me to oh do, but God. if she says, Shark, it's really good, then I think no matter how many people might give you negative, it's like, I'm trusting what Mel says. Or sometimes she'll be honest and she'll be like, that's not great, that. So I'll be like, okay. Dude, we have this such is a good ex- relationship. I, I always say the buck stops with, with my with my fiance. Like if I he is sort of the I mean and, and there's there's gonna we have differences and like I, I made a yeah. sign that I love and he's like, I don't like this and I was like, Well you're an idiot then <laughs> But for the most part, you know, like it's really like it's the one part there's no other you, you know, with uh, even with like your teams, they have other clients and who knows what they're leveraging other clients for to get it. it's it's like I he I just trust that he only has my um you know, what's best for me and yeah, my best interest in, in mind. And, um, I just really, he's kind of like the, the North, I mean, as, as a, this, this job is like, you know, you're a single, you're not in a band, it's just you. Right. And so to have some that you can really trust in that way, I think is really, really, really important for this. Massively. This industry. Massively. Yeah. Oh, and I hope I get like, to meet your partner. Will your partner you be at Lost were? Village? Yes. Yeah. Are you bringing your son? No, he's he's um he's staying with his nana. So okay. we are like we're coming to party. So yeah, is yeah we are there to like let our hair down. I have love that fantastic time because oh. as much as you have a family and I've got Jasper, we also have to make time for your relationship as well. Oh, God. It's just as important. You can't just. <laughs> Revolve your life around Jasper, as important as he is, and we love him dearly. We need to stay connected as a couple, so we yeah. we always do a little thing like this a couple of times a year. He oh. loves staying with his nana, and we just go crazy, let our eyes down, do what we want so to do. Important. So yeah. important. So important. My my parents. I feel like I, I saw that young how important that was. My, I don't, have you heard of a band called the Grateful Dead? I no, I've not. Are they Dude, American? this is like this is. So I love talking to to people who are from the UK because this is, it never ceases to just not blow my mind. So the Grateful Dead, I'm going to begin. They weren't, they, uh, they're, they were an American band. And so, you know, they, they, they definitely have some, if you're a a massive hippie in the seventies over here, you probably know who they are, but they, right. Okay. They like, they came up at the time of counterculture and uh, like hippies and tie dye and, that is synonymous with the Grateful Dead in the U.S. They created, uh, nobody has done it since, uh, this crazy cult following. Right now, this, the remaining members are 70 plus years old, and they could sell out 25 uh, stadiums in any single, in a row in any si- single city in, in, in the United States. Like with, I mean, with having like the lead singer has, has passed, but st- I mean, it is what they have. Oh my God. The culture that they built, the music, the fi- I mean, the, the, they were the first, they, they let people, t- sorry, I'm sorry. I'm all stop soon, but they let people no, like, like right away from the beginning, they, they, they had a, so a, a, a jam band is a band that, um, they never play the same set twice ever. Their sets were like seven hours long. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have songs, but then in the middle of the songs, they'll break down to jams, and the jams can go for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And then they'll, yes, like, yes, yes. they'll slowly just sort of, like, find their way into the next song. And so it's like it's like in, it's like jazz, but in rock, you yes. know? And yes, yes. they they had sections for tapers to tape every single show, and then they 
gave away this, the music for free because like they, they were never really about the nobody listens to their studio recordings. It was all about the live experience. So, like there's this crazy community like, oh, like I have a tape from 1968 at, a, you know, Watson Stadium when they played, uh, you know, Fire Mountain into Scarlet. And like that, I mean, it this community, yeah. my parents are huge deadheads. And so I grew up in this world and I actually have ended up playing some shows with them and I got to introduce my parents to them and that was like my mom almost passed out <laughs> but like I say all this to say my parents would leave my br my my brother and me with a babysitter and they would go to a, you know run of dead shows once yeah. a year and yeah. they will that they're like that is the reason we're still married 100 100 it's so so important because like you too before you came along, before your sibling came along, your mum and dad had their own special connection. And me and Mel feel like that. We, before Jasper, we had our own special connection. Mm -hmm. And as soon as your kids come along, it turns into a completely different connection. Yeah. So you have to keep your original connection alive because yeah. it's not just about the whole family unit is about you two as a couple leading the family unit as yeah. well and you two have got to be together like this to mm. do that it's so important. Oh, i love that that is yeah. that's, that's really important that's really beautiful and i can is. see how easy to be to lose sight of that you know as the things are 100 it's it's hard enough for me as a single human to you know wipe my butt like i can't <laughs> i can't imagine having a kid and you know your relationship and Anyways, so I'm impressed with that. The thing is, you just do it. Yeah, and you would you do, it do it. Because you do. Because you love that little person so much that, like, no matter what happens around you, no matter what's going off, they are the centre of your universe. It's as simple as that. <laughs> so you're always going to be there for them. Always. And you're a fellow Leo. When Leo is your birthday? Mums. End of July. Leo Mums, we've got it down. We're okay, like my, my mom, my mom is July 29th. <gasps> no way! And, <laughs> dude, the fiercity of a Leo mom is like honestly, Go I'm almost on. scared. Like I'm like I can't. Like I already am too much. So if I have a child, is it just gonna go through the roof? You know, like it is. It is. Uh, yeah. Leo moms are full blown. <laughs> full on. It's like don't mess with my kid. Literally, <laughs> do not mess with the kid. <laughs> And then I, 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 I'm obviously asking you a lot of um, self, like questions that are just uh, self-serving for me because I'm starting to process having a kid and what that would look like. And so when you're like, if, if there is a gig where you have to leave your family, you know, and then come back, mm -hmm. do you have any guilt around that? Hmm. That's a good question because you kind of have a guilt to leave, but then you know that you're leaving to, uh, to provide like, I would never leave my family just to go on a girl's holiday and be like, yeah, 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 yeah. see you when I get back. I would never do that. That's just not in my nature. But to leave, to, to, to do your profession and provide, that to me is just a completely different thing. And you're always going to be like, oh, I'm really going to miss you and stuff. But you know that you're going for a proper reason, not yeah. just, it, and it's not a selfish reason. Yeah. It's it's for everyone involved, your family unit. So it's like, that's your profession. That's what you do. So it's like, what? everybody gets used to working around it. You know, it's like, it, it, Mel knows, Jasper knows what the vibe is. And that's it's just so like, awesome. Yeah. He's probably so proud of you. I like, I have, you know, my, my mom was like, PTA mom, front row to everything. Like, only worked part time so that she could, you know, she ran the house. So she, and so, like, that's, I have this, you know, that's my image of what motherhood is. And it's not going to be my motherhood. And I'm, I, I really struggle with that. I, I'm, not, I'm not even, think, like, I'm so far from that, but I'm already struggling with it. I don't think you should do that. I don't think you should, because, like, no matter what happens, you are going to be there for your, for, for your little one. It, it's just an instinct that you have. The minute... Jasper, so I had a C-section and they like pulled him out upside down like this with his foot and we were like, oh, and the minute that I saw him, I was like, done, that's it. That like, this is the priority of everything. Wow. <laughs> 
God, that is so beautiful and so <laughs> wild. Okay, so, but it's good to hear that even when you're like, this is a priority. Because, like, I am such an extreme human. Like, so my fear is I'll have a kid and then everything I've worked my ass off for this last decade, I'll be like, it doesn't matter anymore. I just want to, you know, it, it, I have to give the, all that up to be the best mom I can be. Like, that is, that, that's my fear, being so into them. I, no, because you, you've always got that part of yourself where you built something up, regardless of what it is, you know, whether it's the career you've got, whether someone's built up a, a, a business for themselves yeah. or whether someone's just got a job that they absolutely love, you, you, that's still you inside, so you would never just give that up. You would find a way around it to make it work, and you you might not tour as much. You might not do do as much touring as you do now. But I, I don't think you'd be like, bin this <laughs> off. I've got my kid, dude. That's I mean, I'm literally I left in June. Last time I left my house was in June, and I don't get back till like end of September. And I'm like, this in, is because you know, it never makes sense to go home. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not going to be touring like this. I'll tell you what, which no is way. which is no fantastic. Way. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, you okay. Won't. You're amazing. Okay. So I want to make sure it's Shaq. Yes. Uh, Med. I assume that's how you put it. There's like no. I. You, you never know. Okay. Awesome. Shaq is a yeah. very cool name. Where? Where is that? Your birth? Is that where you were given yeah, at so, birth? Yeah. <laughs> My actual name is Shaquilla, but everybody just knows me as Shaq. Shaq. It's just it's like so people tight. find out that my name's not Shaq, and they're just like, what? Like this is like you definitely. Shaq is so right for you. Like that is the right (laughs) you. uh, It's yeah, nailed it. Yeah, Uh, Shaq Jackson. It's very very sick name. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna read a little your little blur bio about you, and then I'll ask you um, a handful of questions, three four questions, and that whole section is only like five minutes, and that's the part that lives on the radio show on Sirius. And um, and then the rest we use for socials and whatever. But if there's okay. anything that you want us to cut out, you can be like, please cut that out. Like, I might talk about um, me wiping my ass. I might cut that part out, so. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> I love natural. <laughs> I love when I can't stop talking. <laughs> okay. You are listening to Fem House Radio with your host, LPGOB, and this week we have Classic House, Piano House, and Tech House producer Shaq Jackson from the UK. Shaq's house music productions are a tribute to the vibrant grooves, soulful vocals, and infectious energy of the 90s house era. Blending classic elements with modern synths and innovative beats, Shaq is creating tracks that resonate with both long-term aficionados and new age enthusiasts. Her sound is characterized by deep bass lines and captivating hooks. Welcome to Fem House Radio Shack. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Such an honor to have you. <laughs> Tell us your origin story. How did you get into DJing and producing and self-producing your music? So it's literally you guys and the Fem House vibe. That is that is what pushed me to do You're lying. production and everything I'm doing. I swear to God. Honestly. It literally, you guys in Femme House, I, I, I'm a woman of colour, obviously, I have a wife, and everything that you guys stand for and push and talk about and everything like that, we, we, me and my wife just got together and we're just like, you need to like just try and do this, just go for it, just do it. Because it's just so male dominated, it's so male dominated. And Dude, I had like, I had no yeah. natural ability actually. Like I'm, I you know, learning Ableton and like it was not at all. It, I purely did. It. I was like, we just need to see more of ourselves represented. Like that's the thing that kept me, you know, getting up day after day. And thank goodness, because now I love it. But yeah, the, that was a sharp learning curve. But but this was the why. But actually, Angela. what your songs are incredible. What what do you you haven't? It, to me, it sounds like you have been making music since you were 10 and i mean like producing music since you were 10. no literally i've been obsessed with music since being small um i used to go to school worn out and tired from sneakily listening to pirate radio stations in my bedroom at night i was just obsessed 
I used to be like this with my little headphones on, like, shh, my mum and dad hope they, hope they don't hear. And I used to go to school, I used to be so tired. I was just obsessed with music, obsessed. And then it kind of like grew, grew from there. And I started messing around with little beats and doing little things. And, and my wife said, look, I think you've got a bit of a skill here. You need to try and do this. Femmes, 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 look, just go for it, do it. And, and, and that, that's literally it. That is my story. That is my story. It's just music obsession. I am, I am, I am, I've teared up. I have all the goosebumps covering my body. Okay, I'm going to, once this is over, I'm going to come back to this because I don't want to cry right now. Um, that is the coolest thing that I can ever hear, ever, period. It, you are my why. Thank you. Um, it can be extremely challenging for artists to figure out how to put out their music. And it's a question that I get quite a bit. I know you distribute your own music. Can you break down what that looks like? What distributor are you using? What tips would you give to someone looking to get their music out in the world? So we just literally email, email, email people with playlists on Spotify. They're really good. To find out people who have specific playlists on Spotify, that's a really good way to, to do that. So like whatever genre of music you're, you're about, there are ways to find out people who have really good playlists for these genres to get your music out for people to, to, to listen to and to be heard. And do you mean outside of the Spotify editorial playlists? Yes. Yes. Oh. So we have so so me and my wife have spent a lot of time sort of like finding people, like you said, outside of the editorial who have really good playlists with really good listeners, really good saves, and to get in touch with these people direct. I think because we're quite naive to the world of what you're actually meant to be doing it kind of helps because 100%. we just like we just approach people and for me i think to myself the worst thing that's going to happen is someone's just going to say no and then you try again and try again and try again and i think you've got to just keep working hard to get people to listen to your music and this is yeah, incredible just keep doing that it all of a sudden things do start to, to, to happen. I mean, look at this today. I'm sat here now speaking to you today. And no, I am an is... actual fan. I'm a massive fan. It's like amazing. God. I mean, you're, I, I have been, all last time I was devouring your music and I, I'm, I'm actually cannot wait to tell my partner uh, uh, that answer to the first question because Literally. Uh, we were like, how can you work with her? Like, it, I mean, you are, I, you really do have a natural knack for this. I cannot believe that. You, uh, wow. Um, what? What does? So, how do you put your music? Like, I mean, if you were pretending like I'm a complete novice, what are, are you using? You know, DistroKid or like what? How actually? DistroKid. Yeah. DistroKid. Distro okay. That's the Amazing. way we do it. DistroKid. Yeah. Okay. Uh, awesome. And then yeah, just finding people on Instagram uh, who, who might be talking about like so uh, smart yeah advertising certain kind of music or whatever and we just direct direct message direct message direct message this is this is this is what i'm doing listen to this if you like it let me know and free giving your music free freely giving your music to people people who are interested in playing music out free downloads please have a listen to my track have it use it play it it's it's not all about the money it's, it's about getting your music out there. And I've had videos where people have sent me, they've been playing out my track and people have been dancing. And that to me means more than getting a few quid from a stream. hundred percent. Literally, I'm like, Mel, these people are actually dancing and are having a good time to something that you created. I mean, it's, I, did I, I played Barcelona on Saturday and it was after like, five countries in five days playing until five in the morning going straight to the airport and I was like in a I just was oh, my mental health was not great and I had to play until I think my set was like four to six a.m. In, in Barcelona and I stepped up there and I and I played one of my songs which I, I don't always do in my sets and I for some reason I started one and to see them dancing I was like you know what Leah shut the fuck up like <laughs> look at this 
Like, look, at, like, I, not in a million years this kid from Eugene, Oregon ever think that there would be people in a, a different country dancing to your music. Like, this is, I don't care how tired I am. This isn't, yeah. it, it is such a gift. And also, yes. your hustle is so inspiring and, <laughs> and actually so brilliant. I mean, people kind of sort of put out the music and they wait and they hope that, and like, your proactiveness is is that I mean that's everybody should hear this wow yeah you can't you can't just put your music on platforms and just expect people to find it absolutely not it's like you you can't and you have to look at the bigger picture giving your music away it's like even somebody within that crowd even if two people shazam that song that's gonna be two people going away and streaming that song Totally. It's and also, even even that Shazam, picture. Apple pays attention to Shazams, and they start yes. playlists. Yeah. I mean, it's the ecosystem like is actually pretty cool. Um, it and, is. And, and you're you're working it. Um, your new track, Stiming. If I'm am I, am I saying that right? Stiming. Stimming. Stimming. Sorry. Your new yeah. track, Stimming, is quite yeah. personal for you. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us what Stimming is and how it applies to your life? Uh, so this is a special track, yeah, that uh, I created because my my boy is ten years old now, and he, he has uh, autism. So what he does is he stims, and for anybody who doesn't really know what stimming is, it's a it's a repetitive movement or noise that someone will do to self regulate. So oh. people might do it if they're stressed or anxious. My boy does it when he's overexcited. I mean, he gets it so overexcited about everything. You tell him that we're going for fish and chips and he's stimming. Like, <laughs> he, he gets excited. <laughs> so, it's this beautiful. track is all about embracing the stim, but it's a bigger picture of embracing difference. Like, if someone's doing something or acting in a certain way that's not quite cool to you, it's like, embrace the difference. Um, and he's, he's taught me that in his 10 years of being here, he's taught me so much about embracing and giving people time. I think we're always in such a rush and you cannot just throw questions at Jasper. You cannot do that. His mind processes things in a completely different way to mine. And I've learned this through life now when I was speaking to, to people through life, people need time sometimes. And I think... We're all just in this massive rush, aren't we? And we need to just be like this, and we need to just accept that people are different. And it's like, and music has such a power to do that. You're telling me a big crowd of people, they're not all from different races, different beliefs, backgrounds, sexual preferences, and they're all together in that moment. That is powerful, that. We're getting deep, LP. Dude, Shaq, <laughs> you are... Wow, I... <laughs> You are breathing new life into my soul more than you could ever possibly know. You are so special. Oh man, that is that is and and the track is amazing. I think it's so so cool to use your platform to to talk about this and and make such beautiful thing from it and I just uh, I'm so impressed with you. Oh, okay, well, final question for you. What advice would you give your younger self? To not care so much. Literally not care so much. Not be so bothered whether people like you, like what you're doing, love you or whatever. It's like to, to just get on and, and be. And if you believe in something and you believe that you can do it and you believe in what you're doing, just do it. This is what I've learned massively as I've got older. And especially in this music thing, I, if I keep believing in w what I'm making, what I'm producing, what I'm doing, then it's just like, just, just go with it because it's making you happy. Whatever makes you happy, do whatever makes you happy, I think. That's what I would have always told my younger self. If you're happy doing that, forget what anybody says and just go do it. Do it. Yeah. Shaq. You are incredible. Your music <laughs> is incredible. Um, I, I truly am next level blown away by you. We are huge fans. I'm a huge personal fan. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit with us today. Um, you are, you are really special amazing. and the world is lucky to have you. Thank oh, you. Thank you so much. Mwah.